Every year, the holidays fly by. That's why at Lifetime, we're treating every day like Christmas. Merry Christmas! Oh, oh, oh. I'm super excited. It's definitely always Christmas in here. Lifetime presents the best Christmas movies around. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It's Christmas every day. May this be the first of a lifetime of holidays together. It's a wonderful lifetime, all holiday season long. It's the best Christmas present ever. Only on Lifetime. It is the most wonderful time of the year, and Lifetime is making it even more wonderful this year with its It's a Wonderful Lifetime movie marathon. Right now through December 25th, it is 24 hours a day, every day of Christmas movies. In fact, 28 new movies just this year. Movies like You Light Up My Christmas, Merry Little Christmas, Christmas Unleashed, and A Christmas Winter Song. Now, I recently got the chance to sit down with the stars of some of those Christmas movies. And yes, it was a wonderful lifetime of fun. Anyone special? Uh, no. This holiday. A wish box. Let's do it. The cast of One Tree Hill. Are we ready to do this? Reunite for a magical reunion. One, two, three, Frank. Frank. I wish to have a true love's kiss. Hillary Burton and Tyler Hilton. Are you going to make a wish? With special guest Pam Greer. You've always been my wish, Faith. A Christmas wish on Lifetime. All right, Hillary, great to have you on Dish. Hey, thanks. Uh, what kind of time of year is this right now? Um, well, we're really getting ready to kick off all the holiday hullabaloo. Um, it's not even Halloween yet, but we are hitting Christmas hard. That's right. Christmas was, what, December 25th, and now it's October 25th. Yeah. Yeah. It seems silly for the amount of um, time and energy people put into Christmas for it to last for such a short period of time. Right. So I buy into this, like, quarter of the year involvement. I think it's important if we're going to feel that joy, I want to feel it for as long as possible. And especially if it means more work for you, too, yeah, starring yeah. in every Christmas movie. No, it's great. Movie. You know what? People watch Christmas movies all right. year round. Right. It's a wish fulfillment right. thing. And so if that's the content that makes people feel good, great. I'm all in. And you're part of it. That's great. Yes. Uh, speaking of Christmas wishes, the name of your movie this year is? It is A Christmas Wish. And your character's name is Faith. And yeah. usually when a character's name is Faith in a Christmas movie, perhaps she's struggling with her faith? Oh, she's having so much trouble. <laughs> God, wow, you did it's that It's like, so have you well. written one of these things before? You know the formula? I want to after, yes, absolutely. It's a magical formula. Um, yes, I think the notion of struggling with one's identity and with one's faith in the world at large is a common thing that people feel. And so these holiday movies amplify that. And it's a fun outlet where, you know, you get to decorate everything with jingle bells and fun colors. And yeah, it just heightens the, the realism of it a little bit. This is better than I remembered. I've got to bring Ryan here. Thank you for being so nice to him, by the way. He's awesome. He means so much to me. He's one heck of a cookie decorator. And he makes you happy. What more could I want? What about you? Mm-hmm. Anyone special? Uh, no. So Faith has a sister, Maddie. Yes. Who makes a wish. Yes, her sister is in like a wonderful relationship and everything's going great for her little sister. And so her little sister makes a wish for her that she will too find true love at the holidays. And so the definition of what true love is, kind of these um, romantic comedy tropes of like, oh, I've been, I fell and he caught me and it was so romantic. And I've done enough of these movies that right. I've had to act that out so many times. So this was a fun reversal of that where we poke fun at all of those awkward encounters that are somehow portrayed as romantic in these films. And I guess the wish kind of comes true, or does it? It does in a way that she meets, what, Andy or Andrew? I mean, or she's got options. <laughs> of course she does. That's the Look best you, wish right? of all. Yeah, exactly. she's got options. Hope you had better luck than I did. Everybody's a wassling and no one wants to talk about work. I'm sure it wasn't as bad as you said. Hang in there, we'll keep trying, all right? OK, everybody, it's time to slow it down Christmas style. Show these squares how it's done. 
this seems to be like something again like every year once you get into this world it's a beautiful world to be in and to be able to say maybe next year I'm gonna do another one yeah. and next year I'll do another one after that I did my first Christmas movie as a dare uh, Paul Rudd and his wife Julie are very good friends of ours and I was at dinner with them when my very first Christmas movie offer came in and I was just like, this is ridiculous, there's no way. And they, no, you have to do it, you have to do it. They dared me to do it, essentially. And what I found is in this sordid business of Hollywood, this genre stands out as a really great safe place for women, and, and particularly at Lifetime, because it's women directors, women writers, women are the highest paid people on set. There's a lot of, Lifetime walks the walk in this genre, and so I, joke that I found my feminist empowerment in the world of Christmas movies, but it's true. It's a really great, uh, it's a great work environment for women and for moms. So Christmas wish, what is your wish list this year? What's at the top oh, of your list? Um, it'd be cool if my husband would rap and be home for a minute. He's working like crazy right now, and so he always raps right before Thanksgiving, and oh. that is when our movie yeah. airs. And he really, he digs these movies, so it'd be cool to have him home. Very good. Yeah. It's a Christmas wish. Yeah. It could happen. It's gonna happen. But you're also blessed that you're both working That's so much. That's true, yeah. I mean, you can't be a baby about it, you know? <laughs> it's the good problem to have. Very good. All right, if you can tell the Dish customers why they should tune into Lifetime for the Christmas movies. You should absolutely turn into Lifetime because they believe in diversity, they believe in the magic of the holidays, and they want to represent everybody in that and that's why I really appreciate working with them and we're a little naughtier than everybody else we have a really good time over here at Lifetime my first Christmas in my new house hi Sid hi I thought it'd be nice to invite my whole family <laughs> what was I thinking <laughs> Christmas can be stressful here we go <laughs> are you kidding me oh, look what you did. so this holiday season make time for a little love Merry Christmas. <laughs> Kelly Rowland stars in Merry Little Christmas on Lifetime. Kelly, it's great to have you on Dish. Thanks Thank for doing you. this. Thank you for having me. All right, so we've heard of Merry Little Christmas. Yeah. This would be Merry... Little. Little. L-I-D-D-L-E. -L -L -E. um, my character is Jackie Little, and um, she basically gets her whole lesson in the spirit of Christmas and what it truly truly means. She moves into a her first, you know, big home and she has this really great um, successful tech company. She's a tech entrepreneur and wants her family in. And her family comes in and turns her whole Christmas world upside down. In the midst of it, she uh, meets her neighbor. Yeah, how about that? A lot. I know. <laughs> she also meets her neighbor and discovers a little love along the way. And um, it's a really special movie. I, I, don't, I don't know what I'm saying. I'm so sorry. I'm so bad at this. At what? At flirting. I think I read somewhere it was inspired by your own Christmas catastrophe. Yes. What does that mean? Uh, that <laughs> I remember when uh, myself, my son, my husband, uh, we moved into our home, our brand new home, and I remember telling my husband we should have our family here. He's like, you need to pump the brakes. Like, that's, that's going to be, like, way too much. And I was like, no, I want it to be just like the Christmas movies where all the family comes in. I had these beautiful new cream white chairs. My gorgeous nieces thought it would be great that the cookie icing would go with the cream decor. And it did not. Um, to, <laughs> to, it's just so many different things that happened. Um, and I remember telling one of the execs over at Lifetime about it. She said, you'll do your first Christmas movie here with us. And I was like, okay, and that's exactly what has happened. That's great. Life is a living, learning experience. That's you, a fact. Life lesson there. That's a fact. No more cream frosting, no more. <laughs> but that's true, though. Everybody always wants Christmas to be picture perfect. No. And then that's kind of part of the line of thinking here, yes. that the, all the pictures are going to be pretty and mm -hmm. everything's going to look pretty. But And then you set yourself up, and sometimes it's not it's, that yeah, way. Yeah, it's not that way. And that's okay, because... Then Christmas was over, and basically what ended up happening was my son loved having our family oh. at the house, and he was he was so happy. All his cousins and aunts and uncles were everywhere, all under one roof. And when everybody left, he said, Mommy, where's my family? And in that moment, I'm like, oh, my God. Like, 
you know, this is what Christmas is. Like it's it's special and it's all about family. It's all about love and it's all about giving. It's all about laughter and and you know, it's the the corny but sweet sweetest moments of Christmas. That's the moments that we love so much. That's what makes us feel all warm and cozy inside. Sure. Why'd you bring so much stuff for three days? Well, because we thought it would be nice to bring a little of our Christmas with us. Yeah. Mom, you didn't need to do that. I've already got everything we need and it looks perfect. So why don't you leave these things out here and we can just bring your clothes inside. <laughs> Child, don't be ridiculous. And we can't have Christmas now without our Ho, 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 countdown clock. Oh, but we can. Or uh, singing Santa door greeter. Oh, this song you didn't actually bring that thing. Of course we did. The kids love it. What was the moment? It sounds like you had a meeting. We're going to put you in a Lifetime Christmas movie. But yes. before that, was it on your mind that, oh, this might be something I'd want to do someday? Absolutely. I mean, I'm such a fan of Christmas movies. And it was definitely um, a seed planted when I was talking to a friend of mine who does produce movies. And, um, they were like, you can do this. Like, you got this, let's do it. And so when I told them about this opportunity, they were like, you have to run to it. And I said, okay. And that's exactly what I did. What do you want for Christmas this year? What do I want for Christmas this year? There are these vintage Chanel earrings that have my name on them. And I'm hoping that I'm gonna find them under the tree in a Chanel box with a lovely bow on them. And it's gonna be addressed to me. And they're gonna be from my husband. Well, dreams do come true. They do. All right. So we wrap up here. If you can talk to the Dish customers, tell them why they want to watch all these Christmas movies. Oh, my time. gosh. I mean, we're starting early this holiday season. And I think we want to really get everybody into the Christmas spirit, into the just the whole feeling and coziness of it. I think that we've gone through a lot this year as a country. And um, Christmas is always the gift that keeps on giving. And um, it's the love that I feel like we need to be poured into you know, I think we need that being poured into us, back into us. I think everything that we probably lost during the year. Um, sure. So yeah, get some love, get some love and some Christmas spirit on Lifetime. Love it, and some earrings. And some Chanel earrings. How long have you been in town? I'm just here to sell the house. This Christmas. You always did make a good pair. Old flames. He's held a torch for you forever. Will burn bright. Beautiful. You're lighting up the town again. I realize it's still home. I see the way he looks at you, like he always has. Kim Fields, Adrian Holmes. Merry Christmas, Sam. You light up my Christmas, only on Lifetime. Hi, right, Kim. Great to have you on Dish. Nice to be here. Um, what's the name of the movie? You light up my Christmas. Oh, thank you. <laughs> you knew that was coming, right? Come on, boom. I did. Bad timing. Bad timing. <laughs> but you light up. My Christmas. My Christmas. Yes. Tell me about that. And tell me it's kind of based on a true story. And yes. So we there. were inspired by some actual events uh, with the creation of Christmas lights. Um, a gentleman in Colorado uh, back in the 1920s, he uh, had a son who was sick and he dipped uh, light bulbs in red and green lights and then put them in the tree outside of his son's bedroom window. And they say that that's credited to his son feeling better. And so uh, our wonderful uh, executive producer, Tim Johnson, he said, that's a great story. Let's try to infuse that into this story of this woman whose great grandfather started a Christmas light factory based on, you know, that that story and doing that. Uh, and then, you know, fast forward now to you know my character coming back home to the small town. Um, her, her family has passed away and, and she just feels like she's just kind of getting rid of this part of her life and doesn't really want to do anything with her family's business. And of course, everything, you know, flips on its ear as it does at, at Christmas time and in Christmas movies where you realize, number one, you, you can actually go home and home is truly where the heart is. Um, you realize that um, a love is not lost you know, a love is still very much alive if that's what that magic is between the two of you, which she rediscovers and rekindles her, her love with her old flame. God, I'm so inspired talking to you or listening to you, actually. I'm not doing, you're doing great. I'm like, wow, yes, check, check, check. And that's kind of the whole point of these movies in the sense that sometimes the holidays can be a down time for people. And, very much so. And these are the movies that I think if you take your time and you watch them, they give you kind of a hope. And sure. Absolutely. You, you definitely get 
um, a great deal of love. You get a great deal of hope um, and, and, and laughter and joy, you know, so it, it checks all the boxes uh, and then gives you a few surprise boxes to check off as well. Sure. Um, but, you know, the holidays can be difficult for an, um, many, many people for various reasons. Um, and being able to, you know, touch upon that as well uh, and how you can, you know, help to kind of bring yourself through some of that is, is sure. very important. You know, my dad had this whole ritual every single time that we got our treat. Mm -hmm. First, we had to start with the hot chocolate. Oh, boom. Uh, and then he would start playing carols, and he would always start with... Deck, deck the, the halls. halls. <laughs> and then he would get the lights, and as he would string said lights around the tree, mm -hmm. he would begin to tell me the famous story of how his grandfather got sick as a little boy. How did this come into your world? How did these movies yeah. come into your world? So I've been um, part of the Lifetime family for a minute now. We've uh, had a couple <laughs> of projects that we've been developing. Right. Uh, and so when this one came on their radar, they sent it to me and said, hey, do you want to do this? We'd love to see you in this if it if it you know speaks to you right. and it did it it really did uh and then everything just took off you know from there all of a sudden we were you know finalizing the development and, and the script uh then casting and all the stuff you do in pre-production uh, and then we were on set making a movie <laughs> that's pretty cool you talk about the casting um you know yeah. you might just call up some friends sometime and bring... you could you know when you're an executive producer of a movie you can call your old homies and be like yo I'm doing this movie, Nancy McKeon, Lisa Welch, Minnie Cohn, come on over. And, and that's did. what I did, and they did. Yeah. <laughs> so there are some, um, some very special, special appearances in the movie from um, my three Facts of Life sisters. And so uh, not to be left out, the uh, incomparable Charlotte Ray, who passed last year, uh, I had production named the ice skating rink after her in the movie so cool. where they work. So um, so it, it's, it's you know, it gives you that, that, that warm and fuzzy that you always have to have in a Christmas movie. Uh, and at the same time, giving some fun nostalgia, um, creating some new memories, you know? And I love that the girls were so on board with, um, when I said, well, what kind of character would you like to play? You know, and, and up to and including the names of the characters. You know, we named uh, Lisa's character after Nancy's daughter. Uh, Mindy wanted to be named after her, her granny Rose. Um, and so we just, we had some, you know, some fun little inside jokes for fans as well. But it's just one of those things where it's, it's, it's certainly far beyond an Easter egg. Like you got to hunt and look and oh, there they go. Oh, they're gone. Yeah. You know, it's not that, but it's, um, it's a lot of fun. Henry! Grim Henry's gone. This holiday season, call Max. Finding Henry supersedes any nerves you might have about facing your ex-boyfriend. It's a doggone love affair. It's the only thing I want for Christmas. <laughs> you found Henry, and he brought you here. Starring Vanessa Lachey and Christopher Russell. You said that's all you wanted for Christmas. Christmas Unleashed on Lifetime. All right, Vanessa. Great to have you on Dish. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for having me. I, I'm such an idiot because I'm there going, why are they calling it Christmas Unleashed? And then I started reading the plot, and I was like, oh, why, why are they Oh, duh. All right, <laughs> give me the duh. Well, it really <laughs> isn't. Maybe it is that obvious of a, huh? Is it? So um, I have two amazing co-stars in this film. My human co-star, Christopher Russell, is so fun and awesome to work with. And then my furry four-legged co-star, Briggs, is also super fun and awesome to work with. Both of them unpredictable. <laughs> Briggs would do his own thing. Chris would do his own thing. We would have giggle fits. And it was honestly one of the most fun times on a set I've had. Who did a better job of hitting their marks? Chris. <laughs> Believe it or not, a treat wouldn't even get Briggs to his spot sometimes. <laughs> you know what? That, that's the beauty of, uh, I guess, the old cliche is like they say Dogs don't work with children. kids and yeah. children. Right. Or uh, kids and children. Right. Uh, children and animals. Right. And I've really been thinking about it. I think they just mean because they're so free-spirited and they're, they're, they're not in a hurry. They're not thinking about this is eating up the clock. This is eating up, you know, time, everyone's work. It's just... They're having fun, and that was true. Like, Briggs would just do what he wanted to do. He'd go from point A to point B. Sometimes he got there quick. Sometimes it was a little bit of a detour. At one point, he was eating our Christmas tree. 
But in his defense, we did put milk bone ornaments on it. Oh, so, well, there you I go. Mean, yeah. yeah. Even yeah. a trained dog can't say no to that. Right. And he'd know just, what the budget was. I mean. He did. He's like, this is snack time. Yeah. It's crafty on set. Sure. But the unleashed part, okay, so the dog back, goes, Back to the point. Back missing. to the point of your question. Sorry. Wow. Oh, no. <laughs> Terrible interviewee. <laughs> So back, this is what happens. This is when my husband's like, can you just answer the question, <laughs> Vanessa? You Hallmark, you must be a two-hour movie. This can't be 17 hours. Get to the point. But Lifetime, <laughs> Lifetime knows I know. that yeah, I can exactly. talk. Boom. So they've asked me back twice. <laughs> um, so I lose my dog in the beginning of the movie. He unleashed, gets away. But the beauty of it is through trying to find him, I realized that everything that I thought would make my life happy and the goals that I had set for myself, type A personality, this is what I need, this is what I'm going for, actually was wrong. It was everything that was always around me because the dog indirectly has brought me back to all these places in my childhood and growing up that bring back memories that are all beautiful memories. And it's so sweet though, isn't it? it? Really what a great is. concept. It is an amazing concept. Yeah. And yeah. to your point, I, when Nancy Bennett, one of the executive producers, asked me to be in this film, I was like, I love you, I adore you, I adore your vision, yes. And then she told me about this incredible director, Mish. We, um, got to work with and I looked at her work and I was like, this is exciting. It's her first holiday television movie. And then when I read the script and I thought, this is something really unique and beautiful and they're using this dog as a catalyst to kind of bring about this message, I loved it. And yeah. so here we are. How did Henry get out? The lock on the door was loose and it just blew open. I've been meaning to fix that for you. He's always been a bit of an escape artist. Thanks for helping me find him. No need to thank me, it's what I do. We were together the first half of his life, so I love him almost as much as I love you. I loved you. Like, I loved, loved him, but... Lo well, that concludes the grammar lesson for today. Why don't I just make us some coffee? I was looking on some of the research, memorable gifts, and, I mean, your husband gives us great gift. What did he give? He's, A love, child? The love bracelet. Oh, this one. This one you speak <laughs> of <laughs> has not been off. You know what's funny? This bracelet. So the point of this bracelet is it is a love bracelet, and he actually had to screw it on with a screw when our daughter was born. She was born in 2015, so it was four years ago. And the idea is that I always have it as a remembrance of not only my husband and my love and our bond, but also my daughter and my love for her and wanting to be a good role model for her. And he said, when she turns 18, I will unscrew it off your wrist and I'll screw it on hers. And then hopefully when she goes off into the world and I'm like in tears going, did you come up with that or did the guy at the jewelry store? Because whatever it is, it's beautiful. <laughs> so every movie, this is like a little like dish fact. <laughs> every movie, every television show, everything I've hosted, every interview, this bracelet has been on. Except for Christmas Unleashed. Mm -hmm. Because my character has a lot of flashback scenes and a young struggling student wouldn't have said Cartier love bracelet. <laughs> so I took it off for the first time wow. in four years. Did you feel naked? Did I did, I would weird? constantly go. <gasps> I'm thinking maybe this might be the movie next Christmas. Hey, what? Me Brace, and Nick, bracelet love bracelet? Un, love bracelet the unleashed. The love bracelet yeah. unleashed. The love bracelet. <laughs> the love bracelet unleashed. <laughs> Sorry. It could happen. <laughs> she comes unhinged. Next on Lifetime. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you did that a little too well. <laughs> All right. I guess we better leave it there. Did I ask the question? Did it get you asked? You didn't. What was it? Uh, my family traditions for the holiday season. Oh, I have one more question. <laughs> uh, too we're, late. We're good. We're good. Thank we'll wrap it up so there. Thank you so much. Thank you. How would you like to work in my store with me? You could sing for the customers and put a song in the Christmas spirit. This holiday. My dad and I used to sing that song together every Christmas. It was our favorite. Let your heart sing. You're the first person to help me forget about my broken heart. With Stan Shaw. <laughs> We're quite a pair, the two of us. And Ashanti. For all a Christmas winter song, only on Lifetime. Welcome to Dish. Great to see you. Thank you. You too. You look very festive. Thank you. I didn't dry. What, what happened to your red I... or green? No, I'm sorry. <laughs> Are we done? We done? <laughs> we'll try. I'll try to make it up to you. Okay. You look amazing. Thank you. All right, let's go. You've done some lifetime work before. The What was it? Christmas in the City where you mm -hmm. played kind of a badass in yes. many ways. Absolutely. Quite different for this film. Very different. Completely different character. 
Um, I play Cleo, married. Um, I go through a period of being depressed because I'm super close to my dad, lose my dad, and here we are with the holidays coming and the wounds are kind of still fresh. Um, Cleo's really cool. She has like a cool little store. She has a nice little life. She does stuff for the community and she comes across a stranger and it kind of just makes her feel like, oh my gosh, I, I feel a dad vibe, you know? And, and I think what these two characters do is they fill a void for each other, you know, and not knowing that they would ever run into each other, meet each other. And it turns into something really special. It's special just you describing it. So many people can relate to the holidays yes. and the sadness with losing a mm -hmm. spouse or a parent or a child. And, you know, how did that, how, how did you relate to that? Um, I mean, thank God I didn't have to, it wasn't so close to home. I still have both of my parents. Very, very happy and grateful for that. But I did lose my grandfather a very long time ago. And it was so eerie because Stan reminds me so much of my grandfather. Like, you know, when I met him, I kind of had to, you know, reel it in a little bit because I'm like, oh my God. And um, we do this one scene at the end of the story um, where he's in the hospital, the hospital gown, and I'm sitting by the bed. And I genuinely got like teary eyed because I remember some of my grandpa's last moments were right before like a huge, one of my first uh, big performances in my career. And he passed the night before. And just sitting in that hospital, it just brought out all these emotions, you know? And it was it was okay because I was able to channel it, you know, and bring it to the character. But yeah. it's so funny that the message that we were giving in the movie turned into real life for me, you know? Yeah. You feel that energy, <laughs> right? right? Exactly. You feel the exactly. That, yeah. Right. Which, and why not? It just reminds me that I'm way behind on my Christmas shopping. Oh no, Fred, please. I wasn't doing this expecting anything. I want you to feel special tomorrow night. You deserve it. Why are you so good to me? Because you're the first person to help me forget about my broken heart. I didn't do that, that's the music. It does that. So if only you could get a chance to sing in this? Well, I think you have to tune in and find out. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it is a Christmas movie. I do have two Christmas albums out, but you're gonna have to tune in. Fair enough, fair <laughs> enough. Tell us about the Christmas album, so, and, and the music that resonates with you during Christmas and mm -hmm. why you love singing those songs. Um, well, I have two albums out, um, and it's weird because my very first Christmas album, we recorded in like July, so it was mm -hmm. very weird. It was hot outside. Okay. Um, and the second one I did when I did the last Lifetime project, you know, I did um, the whole Lifetime campaign. So it was like a commercial shot and these new songs and new injection. And it was really a really, really cool experience. So during the holidays, family gets together. I'm getting the calls from my aunties that are shopping in the mall. Hey, Sean's song is on in the store. <laughs> You know, so that's always a good a good feeling. You that know. is very cool. <laughs> Has that happened to you when you've been in the store and you start, oh, I think I know that voice. I have. I have. <laughs> that has happened to me. And then what's the reaction like? I just put my hoodie on a little, <laughs> little further. <laughs> I bet. And just the joy of being in the Lifetime movie, what does it mean to you? I think the experience of kind of bringing family together, you know, um, that holiday vibe and just having your loved ones around you is always a really good thing. So when you have an opportunity to do that for other families and other people, it's really, really cool. You know, being home under the covers, it's cold outside, unless you're in LA. <laughs> but if you're in New York or the East Coast, you know, it's cold, it's gloomy, you wanna pull the covers up, you know, get your hot chocolate and uh, vibe out to some Lifetime movies. What do you want for Christmas? Oh gosh, what do I want for Christmas? Just family and love and positive energy. You know, I have a bunch of new projects I'm working on, um, continued success and blessings, you know, and I hope everyone else has a great Christmas. That's my my Christmas wish. Very sweet. I'm walling <laughs> up like the end of your movie here. <laughs> Stop there. Stop there. Cut, cut, cut. All right. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. you. Do you love Christmas? Yes. Do you love Christmas movies? Of course. It is so much fun. Well, good, because Lifetime is Christmas. Oh! It's Christmas every day. 
Lifetime is Christmas romance. Oh my goodness. Lifetime is 24-7 Christmas movies. <laughs> Lifetime is Christmas all day, every day. It's a wonderful lifetime, all holiday season long on Lifetime. It's a wonderful lifetime. Now playing on Lifetime, that's Channel 108 on Dish. Between right now and December 25th, it is nothing but joy to the world movies, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And you can always watch your favorites with Dish On Demand. Even more reason why this is the most wonderful time of the year. What are you waiting for? Go to Channel 108 right now. In the Dish Studio, I'm Scott Patrick.